Male fertility is collapsing worldwide. Two years ago, Levine and colleagues did a meta-analysis and they showed that sperm counts have halved globally from 1973 to 2018. This is a 51.6% drop in sperm concentrations. Now, while this is multifactorial, I can tell you this, SSRI medications certainly are not helping. And so if you're a guy and you care about your fertility, pay attention because the side effects of SSRI medications on sperm is one of the most ignored in psychiatry. Now, one of the biggest things that surprises men when I talk about the side effects of antidepressants on sperm is that they're hiding in plain sight because these are already clearly in the drug labels that virtually no doctors ever read. And so here's what we're going to look at now. We're going to look at the drug label for fluoxetine. This is the SMPC from the European Union. And this is what it says. Now, what you need to know in drug labels, we generally look at animals. And here's what they found. So in adult mice exposed to Prozac, here's what they saw. They saw testicular shrinkage and reduced sperm production. In juvenile rats who were exposed to Prozac, they saw irreversible testicular degradation and necrosis, epithelial damage, reduced fertility, delayed sexual maturation, and immature reproductive organs. And these effects occurred at plasma levels comparable to those seen in pediatric patients. The label also clearly stated that reversibility was not demonstrated and that the significance of these findings in humans is unknown. In other words, the drug company is openly admitting that Prozac can cause permanent testicular damage in young animals and that they can't rule out that the same effects might happen in humans. Now, with the drug label aside, which is already concerning enough, let's talk about some targeted research in men. One researcher, Tank Rikut, and colleagues in 2010 looked at fertility and sterility in men. And so they had healthy men take Paxil or Peroxetine for five weeks. And what they saw was that sperm DNA fragmentation, that's damage to the DNA, more than doubled. It doubled from 14% to 30%. They also found that the number of men with severe DNA damage in their sperm jumped from 10% to 50%. Another researcher, Koi Anku, and colleagues in 2011 took men with normal sperm parameters and they gave them escitalopram or Lexapro for premature ejaculation. And after three months, here's what they found. They found that the average sperm count fell from 86 million per milliliter to 26 million per milliliter. They found that the motility of the sperm dropped from 58% to 23%. And what they also found was that normal morphology fell from 19% to 7%. That is the normal shaped sperm. We've also seen even more concerning studies in rats again. A researcher, Beltrame, in 2023 looked at rats that were given Paxil or Paroxetine for 35 days. And then they came off the drugs for 30 days and had a drug-free period. And after that 30 days of being off drugs, they measured testosterone levels, daily sperm production, the health of the cell, and inflammation markers. And what they found was that testicular testosterone had dropped significantly and that it did not recover after that 30 days of being off. They found that sperm production fell by 22% during treatment and then it dropped a further 50% below baseline, you know, before the rats even got on the drug. After that 30-day recovery period, they also found severe testicular damage that was seen under the microscope in the smaller tubules. These are like essentially the supporting cells that the sperm grow in and they sort of nourish the sperm. And so they found damage in those cells. And this is obviously concerning because, you know, the rats, they turn over sperm a lot faster and you would expect that these parameters would go back to normal after 30 days of being off the drugs, um, but they didn't. And the thing is, we don't really know if, whether this is going to happen in men a lot. There's obviously clearly a lot of differences. You know, men these days, I mean, 50% of men in America uh, who take antidepressants take them for five years or more. And so we have to wonder, you know, what is the compounded effect of exposing your testicles to um, antidepressants for that long? Because there has never been a study where they've taken men and they've measured their sperm and then they've been on antidepressants for several years, and then they've come off and they've measured the sperm again, and that some of these men have died, and then they've been able to do histology where they can take uh, pathology samples and actually look at what's happening within the cells in there. Those studies don't exist. And so we don't really know how much of the rat findings and the irreversibility in these rat findings will translate actually to humans and human doses. But I can tell you for one, that this is concerning enough for me, what I'm seeing in animals, that I would be worried, yeah, maybe some of this is going to carry over to men. In fact, that's probably likely. That's why we use rats as models to predict what is going to happen in humans. 
And so I think this is quite concerning. Now, let's talk a little bit about IVF and fertility, because one thing I mentioned early on is DNA fragmentation. Now, there is strong evidence that DNA fragmentation will reduce the chance of IVF success. Now, Stevenson and colleagues in 2010 looked at 163 IVF couples. And in this cohort, what they found was that high sperm DNA fragmentation was linked to lower fertilization rates. This was 26% versus 45 It led to fewer top quality embryos, 17% versus 29. And they found lower clinical pregnancy rates, that is 13% versus 31%. So what is the practical meaning of this for man taking SSRI medications? Well, is that it may halve the chance of achieving pregnancy with IVF, plus confer a higher miscarriage risk. Now, I understand many people may be shocked that they're hearing about this for the first time, and they're wondering, well, why don't doctors talk about this? Why didn't anyone tell me about this when they put me on this as a teen or as a young man? And the sad truth is, is that most doctors do not read the drug labels. And many of them learn about the risks of medications from what they just hear from their professors and the people who teach them. And really, the drug companies and um, the way people are taught these days is essentially to say things like, antidepressants, they're safe and effective, you know, don't criticize them. If you talk about the risks, it's stigmatizing them. And so people just don't say anything. And, 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 and the doctors don't pass this important information on to men. And the sad thing is, is that I imagine how depressing this might be if you're a man and you're trying to have a child and you're on a medication and no one ever told you that this medication could impact your fertility. And now you're struggling to be successful and having a baby and you're becoming more depressed and the dose is going higher and higher or they're adding additional medications, which are further impacting your fertility. And it's just making the whole problem even worse when the solution would have been to come off the medication. And so what should you do about this? Well, If you are someone who feels that you do not need to be on this medication anymore, you should come off it, but you need to do it slowly and you need to do it in the right way. And so if you're interested in learning how to do that, check the link below this video because I've put together a completely free course on how to safely come off medications. It's something that you can do with your doctor if you're interested.